Imagine that we had a strip of 12 squares laid out like this. On two of those squares are a coin. We're going to take turns moving those coins down the strip. In particular, the active player will choose one coin and move it to an unoccupied square to the right. That player's turn will then end, and it will become the next player's turn, where they have the same task in front of them. Play will continue like this until a player can't move. In other words, the coins are all the way on the right. If you can't move, then you lose, and the other player, the person who made the final move, wins the game. For example, you could begin the game by moving the leftmost coin two spaces. On my turn, I might move that coin all the way down here. On your turn, you could move it another space. On my turn, I could begin making progress with the other coin by moving it one space. On your turn, you could move the rightmost coin all the way to the end. And then on my turn, I could move the other coin to the second to last spot. And now on your turn, you can't move because you can't place a coin on an unoccupied square to the right. Thus, I win and you lose. Resetting things. Here's the puzzle. You go first. Design a strategy that guarantees you the victory. And while you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Your hint for today is to apply backward induction, a topic I cover in Chapter 2 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. You need to think about how this game will end, use that information to inform the move before that, use that information to inform the move before that, and so forth, until you can plan out a strategy from the start. Are you ready for the solution? If not, here's another hint. Your opening move should take the coin currently on square 12 and place it on square 5. Do you see why? Well, let's work through the logic of this game using backward induction as the original hint suggested. The first thing to realize is that there is a single terminal board state for this game, and that's having the coins occupy squares 1 and 2. If you can make the board look like this, you will win. But that tells us something pretty important. You cannot be the person that places a coin on square 1. At least, not with the other coin not on square 2. That's because if you're the first person to occupy square one or square two, on your opponent's turn, they can just move the other coin to that second square, and now they win and you lose. Similarly, you can't be the first person to occupy square two if square one is not already occupied. Now your opponent can move the other coin into square one, and they win and you lose. Still good for them still bad for you. Does this tell you something about what you should be doing? The key inference you should draw is that you should ignore squares 1 and 2. Pretend like they don't exist. That's because if you are the first player to put a coin on one of those squares, you lose. The same is true of your opponent. So really, this game is not about getting to squares 1 and 2, but forcing your opponent to put the first coin on 1 or 2. But that's useful information. It tells us what we're actually trying to do, and it simplifies the game for us. Do you see how there is a new no-go zone? Imagine you were to be the first person to place a coin in either square 3 or square 4. On your opponent's turn, 
they can move the other coin to the unoccupied spot of those two. And if they do that, the only legal moves that you would have is to place a coin on square one or square two. But then that allows your opponent to place the other coin on the remainder of one or two and win the game. In turn, this game is really about avoiding being the first person to place a coin in squares three or four. And as such, when you're thinking about this game on the whole, you should basically ignore squares three and four as a reasonable move. But that makes your opening play obvious. You should move the leftmost coin over to square five. Do you see now why this locks in a victory for you? From this position, your opponent only has a couple of different types of moves. For one, they could place a coin on square 3 or square 4. If they do that, then you place the other coin in the unoccupied square of 3 or 4. Now your opponent is forced to move into 1 or 2, and you will win the game immediately afterward. The alternative is that your opponent moves directly into 1 or 2. But of course, if they do that, then you just go to the other square and you win. No matter what your opponent does, though, if squares 5 and 6 are occupied, your opponent is definitely losing, and you are definitely winning. Did you figure this one out? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.